heart that hurts I want to spend my life Mending broken people I want to spend my life Mending broken people And welcome to 3ABN Today. We are so thankful that you took the time out to spend with us today because we have an exciting program for you. I am so excited. Like, I get excited when we have great guests on, on these programs because we know that we're sharing information that is transformational. So stay tuned to this program. Tell your friends, your enemies, as Danny says, everybody to tune into this program because there's some really great information here. We have wonderful guests today. We have Don Frost, who is the president of Heal Their Land, Incorporated. We have Dr. Leon Brown, who is the president of the Nevada Utah Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. We have Pastor Peter Neary, who is the pastor of the Paradise Church in Las Vegas, Nevada. Yay! <laughs> welcome, welcome to 3 of you in today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You have an amazing project. And we are going to talk about that. We have some music first, and then we're going to talk about this project that you're involved in. Our music today is Jamie George. Jamie George is one of my favorite musicians. He's going to be playing All Hail the Power and Praise the Lord medley. <laughs>
that just makes me want to shout. Amen. I'm, I'm just—it's it, so beautiful. And when you think about the words, just praise the Lord. Let the earth hear His voice. Yeah. And that's what you guys are actually about: praising God yes. and and bringing people to Him through this project that we're going to talk about. I'd like to read some scripture first before we start, because it's really relevant to what we're talking about. It's in Daniel two, and. It's about the image in Daniel 2. We start with uh, verse 31. It says, You, O king, were watching, and behold, a great image, this great image, whose splendor was excellent, stood before you, and its form was awesome. This image's head was of fine gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. You watched while a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed together and became like chaff from the summer threshing floors. The wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found. And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Amen. You're going to find out how this relates to our guest project right now. Brother Don, tell us about Heal Their Land and this whole project that you're doing. Well, Yvonne, Heal Their Land is a ministry made up of ministries. In fact, anybody can be a part of Heal Their Land. Ah. Our, our goal is to uh, turn away from the controverted issues of life and focus solely on the second coming of Jesus Christ. Nice. And the story of Daniel 2 is an amazing story. It's a 2,500-year-old prophecy that hasn't failed in the least, and it gives people confidence that the scriptures can be trusted. And so this is an amazing thing that we're doing, building the statue to represent uh, this story that you've, that you've talked about. But the real story is about the rock in the story. Uh -huh. The rock that comes and it smites this image on the feet and it fills the whole earth. And so that's what we're looking for. It's a, we, that's what we're trying to teach people about is this rock that's coming. And so uh, that, this is what Heal Their Land is about. We're just uh, uh, trying to help the ministry and the mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church by coming up with attention arresting devices and props, hooks as it were, uh, to assist uh, these men in their God-given work to, to reach um, the people of the world. Yes, yes, Amen. that's amazing. Uh, Dr. Brown, how did you get involved with this? You know, a few weeks, a few months ago, uh, Peter Neary called me and he said, uh, Dr. Brown, we need, uh, we've got this statue. So I said, um, let me hear a little more about it. So he started sharing the ideas of the statue um, that it would be traveling across country and, and, and it would come to Las Vegas. So I, we started making calls because the first thing I do is I always vet, you know, as a <laughs> we always want to vet to make sure that things are coming out right. And so we, I made some calls and I started vetting it. And then I said, you know, go ahead. And the reason why we wanted to do that is because our strategic, and part of our strategic model for the Nevada Utah Conference is we're trying to find creative ways of doing ministry. We've got three major centers. We've got Las Vegas, Salt Lake City, and Reno. And we've got some churches along this here in Nevada and California, and we've got a church out in, in, um, in the reservation. So we're trying to find way, unique ways, creative ways of doing evangelism in those regions. We can't do the same thing in Las Vegas that I do in Salt Lake City. Uh -huh. um, we've got to do different ways uh, of reaching it. So this was, this was ideal to our strategic model. Nice, nice. And Pastor Neary, how did you get involved? Um, by the grace of God, <laughs> I had a church member who's a member of the ASI board and is involved with Don, who I hadn't met. And she called me on the phone, and her name is Sophia, and she said, told me about this image that they're creating, that it's coming to Las Vegas, and that there's going to be a symposium. And then showed me some pictures. And after I saw that, I thought, I've got to have this image at my church to do a Daniel series. It'll catch attention. You know, Las Vegas yeah. is a place, it's very visual. Yes. And they do things 
in such a way that it attracts your attention. So why not for Jesus? Yes. And when I heard about this, I got so excited. I, I can't wait for Don to explain it some more because I know our viewers will just, they'll get excited. Yes, and we have um, a video of, the, of cutting down the tree. Let's talk a little bit about the process in making this image. First of all, what is this image? Like, what is it? Well, um, the first thing w that we had to do was find a tree because we, we wanted to carve it. Um, I was traveling across the country with my wife. My wife is actually the one that came up with the idea, but she was saying, well, maybe we could have like a 10-foot statue uh, to help uh, an evangelist do evangelism. And as we drove across the country, it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I went to meet with a church group and um, while, as I was talking to people, I said, you know, what, does this sound crazy to build a statue and, <laughs> and, and make it, you know, big and everything? But I don't know how to do any carving. And uh, does anybody know a carver? And so uh, the people started pointing at this guy. And I said, do you know how to do carving? And the amazing part of the story is he said, you know, I'm not a Bible uh, preacher. I, you know, I don't really know how to do a lot of different things in evangelism. He, of course, he hands out material and talks to people on a one-on-one -on -one basis. He said, but the only thing I know how to do is carve. And he said, two weeks ago, I was praying to the Lord, and I asked him, can you give me a way to use the gift that you've given me to reach people? Wow. And so when he said that, I said, well, this has to be providential. Yeah. Wow, and look so at God. That started, yes. that started the process, but it took, us, it took us two years to find a tree that was harvestable uh, to be able to carve into the statue. And so uh, this uh, process, we, we, we got the tree in Eureka, California, and then we brought it up to Idaho to carve. Ah, uh, well, let's take a look at that, at that video. Fascinating. Yes. How tall is that? Is a tree? Well, the tree, the tree that we were able to harvest was 120 feet tall, and we counted the rings. They were about uh, that came in at 127 years old. Wow! And um, what we did is we took the the largest 43 foot section of it, and so that's what we took there to Idaho, and then we 
put it in the ground, 13 feet of the, into the ground, upside down, so that the widest part would be at the top where the shoulders of the image would be, and then we started carving. This is fascinating. <laughs> you, you know what's amazing to me is how God will implant these ideas, yes. mm -hmm. and then he orchestrates the whole thing. He sets you up with the carver. Mm -hmm. I mean, how God is just incredible. So when you went out there and you met this carver, you knew that this, that was kind of like uh, um, just God's uh, confirmation yes. that this is what he wanted you to do. In addition to that, in, um, in the history of our church, our church has a history mm -hmm. of these kind of uh, representations. Um, and the Bible does too, you know, uh, God used... Uh, Figures. Now, he told us in the commandments not to make images and That's bow right. down to them. Right. But he then told Moses and Aaron to make images like the Ark of the Covenant, the brazen serpent, and you can read in Ezekiel some of the other uh, things that were going to be put in Ezekiel's temple. And so this is an education tool. It's, it's not a, an image that we would worship. Well, and I'm really glad that you made that distinction because some people watching might say, well, what are we doing making images? No, this isn't an image for worship. Mm -hmm. This is actually an image that illustrates yes. some biblical principles. Yeah. Yes, an um, education tool. Yes. And, we can, and, 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 you know, we can show that if you say something, people will remember what you say in part, but if they can hear and you say something, it'll, it'll stick better. Yeah, and you see it. Yes. Mm -hmm. When you see it, that visual imprint is also really important. important. So what you did was the Lord implanted this idea in you, and then you met the carver, and then you ended up, did you call Pastor Neary, or did um, the, the president here call Pastor Neary? Well, I believe uh, that um, uh, Kim Kerr, Kim one of Kerr. my associates, who's uh, doing missionary work overseas right now, he called you, right? He called Peter. He called, he called Peter. me. He called yeah. Peter. Mm -hmm. yeah. And everybody here is just really vested into this process. And the, the, see, here's the thing why we chose Las Vegas. Las Vegas is a city on the move. Mm. It's, a, um, it's a place that needs to be focused on because... If you reach Las Vegas, you're going to touch the whole United States. Mm. Uh, what, uh, Dr. Brown, what did we find at 42? Yeah, so as I, as I was looking at this, we, Las Vegas has estimated last year about 42 million people visit Las Vegas last year. Wow. Um, it's a large number of, of people. And, you know, from all over from the all world. From all over the world. Yeah. And so, and not just in Las Vegas, across the Nevada Utah Conference, we've got um, uh, we've got Tahoe, we've got Salt Lake City, we've got Zion Park. Probably over 50 million people come to, to, our, to our region each year. And so we've got to find unique ways of being able to treat, preach the gospel. Um, and what we're talking about, Don and I were talking about, is the, how Ellen White writes about these models. Um, uh, was it? Like, like Capernaum. Yeah. See, uh, we're, we're told that uh, Jesus used uh, Capernaum as uh, the centerpiece of his work mm -hmm. because he would go and share, you know, in the streets with people. And uh, Capernaum was a pleasure resort. It was a, it was a crossroads center. And so people would come, they would hear the message that Jesus would share, and then they would take that message to far and distant lands. And so by going to a, a place like Las Vegas, and we're encouraged, we're counseled to go to these pleasure resort places, people are seeking things. Yes. They go to Las Vegas, yeah. sure, they're looking for, you know, get rich quick and all these things, but they're looking for, uh, to fill a hole, a void right. in their life. Uh, and so if we can be there and we can share the gospel uh, with these people that are coming, and, and you know... Um, this technique is amazing because what happens is they see this image, it looks totally pagan, and they say, you know, what is this thing? And we can hand them a little booklet that has a picture of Daniel on it. And when they find out that this is in the Bible, well, what else is in the Bible? Yeah. Check this thing out. And so this is what's exciting about, uh, and, and by the way, mm -hmm. you can't oversaturate Las Vegas because if you go to a little town, yeah. Well, how many mm -hmm. times can you go around before the people, well, I, thank you, I already got one of those. Right. But if you go to Las Vegas, well, 
there is a you know a hundred thousand people that day, and tomorrow it's another hundred thousand, and you see you, you can't. People are coming in and out. Yeah, Absolutely, that's exactly right. yeah. And, and that's why work in cities like Las Vegas and New York and other cities that are pleasure destinations have to be focused. So if we live, say, in Montana, don't think that by not that, that by supporting the work in Las Vegas that you're not supporting the work in Montana. You are. Mm. That's a that's a great point. The the whole idea of people coming there, they're coming there, but they're come they're in and out. They're moving. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have a constant flow of new people who are going back to where they live. And if they catch the bug, so yes. to speak, then they can find a church in their local area and and go. So this is and this it's is economical tremendous. Economical because yeah. we can give out the you know, dispute, mater distribute materials in places like Las Vegas, mm -hmm. and then they pay for all the shipping, see? That's ah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that's also a good point. So the way this is going to be used then, it's going to be placed in a very prominent area yes. in the city. Explain yes. how you're going to do that. Well, we're in the process right now of getting, you know, the, the venue and the permits together. We already are having another series of meetings there. And this is what's interesting. Yeah. Because we're taking something that people are unified on, which is Daniel 2. Mm -hmm. And we're having a meeting, a, a three-day meeting, on a subject that uh, the church is not unified on. That's called Daniel 11. 11, yeah. And so what we're trying to do is set up this Daniel 11. So there is a, a steering committee set up through the church called the Daniel 11 Steering Committee. And its design is to bring Adventist pastors, evangelists, theologians, and Bible enthusiasts together and prayerfully come to some kind of a consensus on Daniel chapter 11. This has been going on for many years, but it's changed. And it's changed in, in a way for the better in that Everybody wants to press together. They want to be unified. And so people are coming, uh, ministers and others from around the country and even the world are coming together to stand, study Daniel 11 prayerfully. But then, Yvonne, here's the exciting yeah, part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we're, we're going to take uh, individuals that don't agree with each other on this topic and we're going to put them two by two and send them out onto the streets of Las Vegas mm. with material where they can labor together for souls. And we believe, Yvonne, that this is key. If we can press together on the central themes that we agree on, and mm. we agree on much more than we don't agree on. Right. Once we co-labor together, we're in the trenches together, as it were. Mm -hmm. You build a camaraderie and a love for each other right. and a passion for reaching souls. Mm -hmm. And so even if we leave Las Vegas and we're not unified on uh, Daniel 11, uh -huh. we can be unified in, in reaching for souls with Daniel 2. And we can, be, we can have u uh, unity and diversity. Mm. So, so that, that was a linchpin that actually caught me. Because when I, when I heard they were going to do a Daniel 11 symposium, my, my concern was, well, you know, there's a lot of disagreement about Daniel 11. Uh, but then as we talked to Pastor Kerry, he was, he was saying, well, you know, we're going to do the Daniel 2 as well. And see, the, the key here is, um, I've been married for 31 years, and I know that they're going to be, for the rest of, <laughs> for the rest of eternity, um, my wife is going to have an opinion, I'm going to have an opinion about right. something, right? right? And in the church, it's going to be the same way about right. a particular theological frame. But the key is, I'm still married after 31 years. I'm still in love with my wife. Oh, it's beautiful. I think beautiful. the church has to feel that we can have areas where we may not necessarily have total, complete, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, agreeing on every issue. But at the end of the day, when we can find oneness and unity, because we have more that we believe in in common right. than we do in disagreement. And so that's, that was the thing that hooked me. And when they said they were going to do the Daniel 2 and go out, oh, that was just awesome for me because that excited me. Yeah. That then gives us the, the evangelism tool to reach into the city of Las Vegas and around my conference and be able to say, yeah, we've, got, we've got something here. That yes, that's and incredible. You know, if, if when I'm a convert from Catholicism. I attended meetings at the age of 26 years old. I heard this message. It captivated me. I thought, I'm in the largest Christian mm -hmm. church in the world and never heard of the second coming of yes. Jesus Christ. 
and, and then the prophecies, they are so powerful and pertinent for today. And we need to be preaching those in whatever way we can get the attention of the people within the bounds of our beliefs. We've got to do this. And this image gives us an impetus to this thinking. And it'll excite our people when they walk into the church and, and there's this huge image standing outside for a period of time. Um, they're going to get excited too. Uh. It's, it's such an exciting hook. Yes. You know, it's a way, just as you had mentioned, to have people look at this and then say, what is this about? Because it does look pagan. Mm -hmm. What is this about? And then you have literature to give them. Yes. Yes. To explain mm -hmm. what it's about. That's it's great. You know, one of the things we were talking about um, is the, in 1844, and I want you to just kind of share that a little bit. 1844, um, as, a, as a way to do evangelism, um, the church used, the founders used images, not, you know, same kind of statue. In fact, one piece uh, was used where as, as this presenter covered it, the head was removed, the chest was removed, and, mm -hmm. and what was the left was, the, was the, the foot. So they could actually see um, that the important piece of this is that stone that's going to come. Yes. The establishment of yeah. the kingdom of God Damn. for eternity. Man, that's yes. it's amazing stuff. It is, it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell us some more about that. Well, that was Charles Fitch, and uh, he was a firebrand preacher yeah. that uh, believed in the, in the soon coming of Jesus, and he was uh, looking uh, for Jesus to come in 1844, and um, the Lord laid him to sleep just a short time before the disappointment to, uh, mm. to save him from that disappointment. But, uh, but, uh, but Brother Pastor Fitch, um, he uh, uh, traveled around, and he had this giant, uh, we don't know exactly how big it was, but it was a large uh, Daniel II statue. And uh, in, in our writings, our pioneer writings that we have from 1844, it says that uh, at each of his meetings, there was no less than 5,000 people yeah. came oh, to the wow. meeting. Yep. And, and so... Um, be nice. Yes. <laughs> that would be awesome. And, and Ellen White <laughs> tells us, and um, we, you can read about this in the look, little book called Evangelism. She has a whole section in there. And she references um, another man. His name was W.W. W. Simpson. And W.W. W. Simpson was another very successful uh, Adventist evangelist. And in the 1900 to 1906 time period, he also used these attention grabbing devices where he had, he was doing uh, evangelistic work in, uh, in Los Angeles. Mm. And back in 1906, Hollywood was in its infancy, but he went to uh, Hollywood prop designers and had them build these uh, large representations of Daniel and Revelation. Huh. And when he was having his meetings, uh, they would have cords or ropes or whatever, and as he would be talking about one particular thing, they would bring these things out on the stage. And so, again, attention arresting devices. And, and uh, Ellen White says that the work that he was doing in 1906 reminded her of the work that was being done in 1844. Wow. And of course, it worked in 1844, yes. it worked in 1906. It it's very out. simple. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so this, this is what's exciting. We don't have to uh, guess whether these things will work. They will work. And we're trying to encourage uh, through building this statue mm -hmm. uh, for people to use other means. Uh, maybe their banners or some kind of charts or maybe there are other statues and there are other statues that people have and 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 they work they get people's attention we live in a busy world yes and we have to be able to give a quick message and sometimes uh, and we give out a lot of great controversies and I highly encourage that but sometimes when you hand a big book like that people are intimidated and right I'm not gonna read something like that and in other places we've been doing some evangelism recently in in, uh, in Nashville and uh, a lot of people have uh, people that are religious, uh, family members, and they hear these things. And, and if you come and say, well, would you like a book on Bible prophecy? Well, I've heard all that. My uncle's a preacher or whatever. Right. Uh, but if you show something like this and, you, and they say, well, what is that? And you say, well, would you like a little booklet on that? Well, it's thin and 
it doesn't seem religious. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh, uh -huh. So the Lord has different ways of getting people. Yes, he does. Yeah. Yes, he does. In fact, we have another video that, that kind of addresses the first carving of this image. Mm. Let's take a look at that. Yes. We're hitting something. We're hitting something. Hope it ain't metal. I hope it isn't metal. Some kind of metal that was drove in there. Is that what it is? Yep. Wow. See it? Right there. Looks like a spike. Looks like a spike drove in there. About that big around. Right in the metal. You're going to have to work around that thing, won't you? Well, we went through it. <laughs> we went through yeah. it. <laughs> incredible I mean really to look at that to see you know it started out as a tree and then to see it carved into that image is just incredible what wh where did this happen where was this being done right outside of Sandpoint Idaho uh, in, in Sandpoint has a little sister town called Pondere it was done there in Pondere in fact it's there's a highway right there called 95 and that's the the main thoroughfare in North Idaho and um, as we're carving the statue, people just pull in, and some people would even just take f chairs and sit out there and watch the carving. <laughs> and we were able to give literature and great controversies as people come in. And so just carving it, yeah. uh, thousands <laughs> of people, maybe even a, over 10,000 people in the area, know now the story of not only Nebuchadnezzar in, in this image, but the story of the rock, Jesus Christ. And what has happened is the local newspaper, yeah. mm -hmm. they did an article on the carving of the statue because it really got attention. Yeah. And they did a superb job talking about what the statue means huh. and about the coming kingdom of Christ. Well, look at that. Look at yep. even the newspaper is, is an evangelistic yes, tool. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> right? That's incredible. And I want to say one thing. Um, this was all volunteer driven. Mm. And so you have, we have two uh, carvers. And, um, Eugene and Jason uh, d did a terrific job with the carving, but then there's tons of support staff. I say tons, there's a few only, really. Mm -hmm. but, but everybody did a fantastic job, and, and this project uh, wouldn't be possible at all without, without these amazing volunteers. Mm -hmm. Amen. Again, God knew how to put everybody together Amen. who's playing a role in getting this done. 
because it has a greater purpose. It is going to be used to draw people to find out what is, what is this? Like, what's going on here? And then once, once they have that curiosity, give them that literature, and the Holy Spirit takes it from there. Amen. But what a tremendous project. Yeah. So the next step, now it's, it's already built, and we're gonna show another video in a few minutes, but it's already built. What's the next step now with using this? You're gonna use it in Las Vegas. What, what else are you gonna do? Well, uh, the next thing that we had to figure out is how we're gonna transport this around. Mm. <laughs> and so- uh, <laughs> That's a good <laughs> that's that's question. Yeah. Because it's big, it weighs a lot. Right. You know? uh, and, and, and we weren't really 100% sure. We, uh, but one of my associates, uh, his name is Brian, he came up with an idea that we should have a custom trailer built. And the way that it would work is that the statue would sort of lay at a slight angle on this trailer and uh, it would be pulled around by a diesel truck and, and while it was being pulled to each venue that it would go to and be used, uh, can you imagine going down the highway and you see this four-story a statue of uh, Daniel II and it's got its arm crossed and you're able to look at it, right? Yes. Uh, but the way that it would work is that there would be a series of hydraulic pistons that after it you know, got to where it was going, that the pistons would lift it up vertically. And then what we decided was, well, we didn't want to have the trailer there. So in the base of the statue, four giant hydraulic legs would come down, level up the statue, brace it in place, and then we would be able to decouple the trailer mm. from the base of the statue, mm -hmm. and the statue would be freestanding. And so, uh, well, we never built a statue like this before. I'm not sure anybody has. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we want to make it mobile. Uh, so we had to find a company that would be willing to do this, and they had to have an engineer on staff because we didn't want this thing to fall over. Right, like exactly. And so we contracted with a company out of uh, Quebec, Canada. In fact, uh, Pastor, they have a, an office in uh, Reno, Nevada, uh -huh, too. Oh, see? <laughs> yeah, so there's a connection. <laughs> yeah. And what happened was um, we told the owner, who is also the engineer, about what we wanted to do, and he was excited about the project. He even flew from Quebec down to uh, where we're building the statue. He looked at it, he surveyed it. And as we speak right now, the finishing touches are being put on this amazing uh, trailer uh, that's uh, just as much as a, a feat of engineering as the statue itself. And we're gonna couple the two together and we're gonna be able to make this uh, massive statue uh, mobile and take it around. So other cities, might want you to bring the statue to their city and put it up and use it during evangelistic campaigns and things like that. Yes, we, we've created this statue not for our own use or for any glory or anything like that. What, what, what the intent is, is for God's people, for different conferences, different churches around the country to uh, take it all over the place, use it for their evangelistic meetings, camp meetings, you know, different things like that, and have a team of people that is set up to transport it from place to place, erect it, and, and use it for service. Right, right. So the team obviously travels with the, with the statue and makes sure that it's in place. And yes. Because my, my concern with that is, you know, automatically you think, oh, my goodness, this thing could fall over. Yeah. Or, you know. Be vandalized. Yeah. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. So you, you're thinking... How is it stabilized so that there's no problem, there's no concern with it toppling over? Well, the, the engineer, what, he couldn't find a tree big enough to replicate this one because they want to they wanna test it with another device ah, before we put the statue in it. Right. So what they did was they took, uh, I think it was, he told me, 12 other trees, and they're going to bind them together into a large, you know, single unit and when, when the trailer is complete, they're gonna test it with that to make sure right. that, you know, that everything's working well. Everything. And the, the trailer itself, as the statue is raising up, there's a counterbalance system. There's a 5,000 pound weight, and it will slide up the trailer as the statue is lifting, counterbalancing the weight uh -huh. of the trailer, and it'll all be controlled. Ooh. Yeah. 
this is it it is it's amazing. Yeah. it's amazing it's amazing we have another video i'd like for us to get yes, to let's watch that. to uh, check out and then you can tell us about it yeah This is incredible. Man. Yvonne, in, in that picture, you saw the steel beam. We were concerned that when we got down to the ankles uh, and the tree's very heavy, that it would weaken it. So we inserted a, um, a steel beam into the tree to give it like a strength and spine. And so, and then we took six foot long bolts and drilled all the way through the tree and compressed the steel into the tree to make it one piece. Wow. wow. <laughs> It's phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, really, that's it's so interesting. The whole process is such an interesting process, and we know that God is behind it. Mm -hmm. This is a, a amazing. So, for those who don't really understand the whole image of da of Daniel two, can you just either one of the pastors can you give us a uh, a general synopsis of what that is? Because some of the viewers might not know mm -hmm. what that image is about. Yeah, Pastor um, Peter. You know, first of all, we were talking about um, disagreements. If, as you look at the commentaries on the book of Daniel, you get these, all these viewpoints, not from all the other churches, not just Adventists. Mm -hmm. Almost everyone agrees on Daniel too. Mm -hmm. Almost, I mean, almost every single one that the head represents Babylon. Mm -hmm that the breast and arms represents Medo-Persia, which overthrew Babylon, mm -hmm. and that the, the bronze um, thighs represent uh, Greece, which overthrew Medo-Persia, and then the legs of iron, which is Rome, mm -hmm. and they overthrew Greece. And, and what's the most amazing, when Don mentioned this, What's so amazing about it is there's no fifth kingdom. Mm -mm. Hmm. And that's exactly what happened in history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Roman Empire was divided mm -hmm. into various other countries, mm -hmm. and that's where the stone strikes the image our day. And when you explain this simply and you've got that beautiful graphic standing before their eyes, they'll see this. 
Jesus is coming now. Yes. It's our day. Yes. It's not somewhere down the road. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and, oh, go ahead. Here's the, here's the, the part that always thrills me about this, this image is the fact that thousands of years ago, God gave Daniel a vision of the historical record of humanity yeah. all the way through the end of time. Yes. That is the powerful story. Yes. So those who say, well, there's no God or there's no, God knew and the details of those records have come through accurately throughout history. There has been no miss, <clears throat> no accident, nothing has gone out of wire, a wire, but it's been perfectly rep represented just the way that God told Daniel. Uh, and that's why this is so exciting. Yes. Uh, that we can tell the world today in 2019, we can tell the world right now that the God of heaven and earth, the God that we believe is a God that is accurate even to right now. And if he said that this, this kingdom is going to be established, just as sure as all the other parts of this image came through, going forward, Jesus will come again. And that's the end of the story, that Jesus is coming again. Yes. He's coming soon. And yes. fill the whole earth. Yes, sir. Amen. And fill the whole it, earth. Sir. If I could add one thing, Eva. Please. It, it says in the prophecy that at a, a point in time, after, like Pastor Neary said, that this fourth empire would be broken up into different countries, that they would try and put it back together. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it, the, the scripture says that when they try to do that, then that's when the rock comes. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and that's the exciting part about it is because they came up with an idea. You've ever heard the, the old uh, children's uh, nursery rhyme hum about Humpty Dumpty? Right. Yeah. All the king's horses and all, all the, the king's, king's men, men couldn't put them back together again? Right. Well, they can't put Europe back together again. Right. And the European Union has fallen apart with Brexit and all these things that are going on over there. And so in the days of those kings, they've tried to put it together. Mm -hmm. It's not working. Oh. Jesus is coming. That's, That's, right. Right. That's right. That's right. He That's why is. this image is so important for yes. us, the world to know that the God we believe in is the God that's real, he's available, and he's, he's, he knows the beginning from the end. That's right. And if he knows the beginning from the end, he knows your life and my life, and he knows your personal circumstance, whatever you're going through right now. And that's why this is so important for us to tell the world. That's, I'd, that's I'd like great. to add one little thing, a testimony for me about Don and Kim and the others. Mm -hmm. There's no ownership here. Yeah. These guys are willing to give it to whoever calls. I, I hope any of our viewers who have been touched wouldn't say, well, I wish he could come to my church. Right. Call them and they'll find out if it's not booked. It's yours. Yeah. Wow. And and there's no selfishness here. Yes. And so Beautiful that really spirits. touched yep. me. Yes. Beautiful spirits. In fact, I think we have some pictures of the final image. This is one of our volunteers. His name is Bill. He's over six feet tall. And this gives a good perspective of uh, how big the, the head is. And it shows uh, the head there finished in gold. Wow. Look at that. Look at the comparison. There's What's Bill this? again. He's uh, up on the shoulder, just standing behind the shoulder in the structure there that we have mm -hmm. around it. And that just shows you, this, the, you know, the arms of... The folded silver. arms. Yes, and yeah. how big it actually is. There's another one there. Recently, we had some visitors come and walk in the building. They were really amazed at how big it actually is. Yes. Ooh, that is incredible. I, I know when people see it, they're probably like almost overwhelmed because it's so huge. It's so huge, and the story behind it is so important. It's mm -hmm. so important. Mm -hmm. So what happens next? Like after, after we do Las Vegas, what are you guys going to do? Well, it's going over to Pastor Neary's church for evangelistic service. Ah. Yes. First things first. Yes, sir. <laughs> good. Very good. And I think they're going to run two meetings. Are you going to have... The, the Spanish church uses our church for evangelism, yes. and it'll be out front for that. And then we're going to do our evangelism following the Spanish church. That's incredible. So this is... The whole idea is to get this statue going yes. so that people can be drawn into the whole evangelistic mm -hmm. thrust that you're doing. What is, what's your vision for this? Where do you see this going? Well, my vision is to inspire our people to come up with ideas of their own and, and let's press together, unify on those points like Daniel 2, 
and get the message out there. Yeah. Time is fleeting away and we don't have time to get caught off and go off into the weeds on different issues. And we need to really focus and know and, and that, th that Jesus is coming. And this prophecy right here and the events that are going on in the world are sufficient enough evidence to show us that that is happening. Amen. Yes, for sure. I know that you want to get in touch with them and to find out how you can get involved, find out what you can do to support this effort. Um, we're going to put an address up in just a minute so that you will be able to contact these gentlemen and um, perhaps even get the statue to come to your church. Yeah. So let's take a look and see how we can reach them. If you're interested in getting involved in presenting prophecy through the most creative ways, you can support this effort and be part of this initiative by contacting them at Heal Their Land Incorporated, Post Office Box 97, Bonners Ferry, Idaho 83805. That's Heal Their Land Incorporated, Post Office Box 97, Bonners Ferry, Idaho 83805. Or you can check out their website at HealTheirLand.org. Again, HealTheirLand.org. Contact them today. They'd love to hear from you. This program has been such a blessing today, yeah. really, because to hear about what you're doing and to think outside the box. This is thinking outside the box. This isn't traditional evangelism. This is really creative evangelism. Do you have any closing thoughts for our viewers? My closing thought is press together, press together. We need right. to press together like yeah. never before. Yes, we do. I would say my son was taking me to the airport on Monday night and, and, um, and he was, said something that I thought was profound. He said, Dad, if our intent is to win souls for the kingdom of God, we've got to find ways to be able to do that. The church has got to find ways to do that. So when we look at these kinds of ways that we're using right now, these are, you know, creative ways of doing it, but it also the, the truth is important. Every human being that part of this church, our goal is to win somebody for Jesus. It's not just to go to church on Sabbath morning, but to win someone for Jesus Christ. That's the right. world needs to know that Jesus is coming again and, we, and he loves us. That's right, that's right. That's Pastor Peter? Well, you know, for me, I want to encourage everyone to seriously consider utilizing any method that we can to get this beautiful message out in a world that is just unraveling, falling apart. Um, so little hope, suicide up, drug addictions astronomical. And we've got the message to bring hope and help. And this image calls attention to that. And I hope it rallies all of us. Yes. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for the work that you're doing for the cause of Christ. We really, really appreciate it. And thank you for joining us. You know, we know we, you could have been doing something else, but you decided to join us. Join us next time. God bless you. <laughs>